Progress and the most important thing in our life is our heart. Hindi में हम कहते हैं जो बात दिल से जुड़ी हुई होती है वो हमें अच्छी लगती है and we always aspire that our heart should be healthy and there are some doctors who specialize in making sure that we live a healthy life and if there are some problems they are there to help us and to guide us through and one doctor who has come from Boston right now to ITV studio was in London and has been in India and he has helped not only the common men but some other people who are well known uh, to us and when we uh, read these names which are like Dr. Manmohan Singh then we feel ah, there must be something special about uh, this cardiac surgeon whose name is uh, Dr. Mukesh Hariawala. Uh, am I right uh, Dr. Mukesh? Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show Ashok. And before we continue, uh, proceed uh, towards Dr. Mukesh, allow me to also mention uh, with your permission that you are not only a doctor but you are a management uh, professional also because you did the MBA and probably you were the first cardiac surgeon to have uh, opted for this course of management. Um, we'll come to that again but uh, we begin um, from the days when you started uh, looking at heart as your focus and you uh, in your mind thought that cardiac surgeon is uh, my passion. Yes. Uh, we'll have to go back in my life maybe about 20 years and this was on graduation in India from medical school and when it, uh, it was my turn to do post-graduation and start working in hospitals in uh, Mumbai, India, I got my jobs in the cardiac department, in the cardiac surgical department. I was fortunate enough to work with the likes of Dr. Manke, Dr. Bhattacharya at Bridge Candy Hospital. And that aroused interest as that here are some pioneering surgeons doing great work in India. Also, India being a large country, needed a lot more cardiac surgeons than this few of them. So uh, uh, with that interest and passion, I decided to pursue a cardiac surgical career. And now, um, before we get to uh, the seriously relevant uh, theme of our conversation, let me get to another side which might be serious or, or not that serious. But uh, Dr. Mukesh, uh, I came to know that uh, a wonderful uh, musician from India, R.D. Burman, was also your patient. And then we already mentioned about Dr. Nunnon Singh. Now the question is, uh, here is someone whose heart is beating in a harmonious fashion and uh, sharing music uh, with everybody. And here is uh, Dr. Nunnon Singh, probably he was uh, very well known as a financial wizard yes. who uh, guided India's economy in a very special way. So as a doctor, uh, the way uh, the creator has uh, um, created hearts amongst different human beings. Is there anything distinct that uh, one would uh, notice? Well, uh, my association uh, with uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh as a patient and even R.D. Burman music maestro as a patient was in London, England during a phase of my career where I worked with very renowned heart surgeons like uh, Dr. John Wright and Dr. Magdi Yacoub. Uh, so my interactions with them were purely as a patient and part of the surgical team. But talking to them, I did get a sense that they were special people. Dr. Manmohan Singh was uh, past governor of Reserve Bank of India. He was part of uh, uh, the economic process of uh, taking, and he was at that time not the prime minister, but he was the advisor to Prime Minister Narasimha Rao, as opposed to R.D. Burman. He's a renowned music uh, director that uh, generations are aware about. But again, when it came to patients, he used to tell me in the hospital is somehow there was some synchrony with the heart beating and his process of developing new music. I found it very strange and very interesting because I don't understand music. I follow music, I buy music, uh, but uh, while we are at uh, talking about R.D. Burman, I still recollect uh, a very uh, important incident that happened with uh, R.D. Burman is that when he was about to be discharged from hospital, he invited me home for dinner and he gave me a package of CDs. CDs was at that time, 18 years ago, was new technology. Absolutely. And uh, I did accept it. But next morning, I returned it back. And the reason I returned it back, because I was not an owner of a CD player. I had the basic <laughs> cassette player. And uh, 
So I gave it back to him and I explained this to me. He took it and guess what? The following day, he returned the same box of CDs with me accompanied with a CD player. So here I had met a music maestro who some corrective work we had done on the heart, but I also realized the value of what it means to have a heart for other people and a wonderful human being. I, I fully appreciate that and thanks for sharing that story. Uh, he, rather than taking it in a different direction and thinking that such a renowned doctor or at least a doctor and he cannot go out and buy a CD player, he was sort of nice enough to think in a positive way and come back to you with his CDs. So now we come back to you with another question wherein as a patient uh, when someone approaches a doctor, of course there is a relationship uh, between uh, the doctor and patient. Uh, the doctor has the knowledge and he has a problem. And also there is another uh, level wherein the doctor is uh, charging some fee and the patient has to be careful how he can take care of that fee. Um, the medical reform bill, now we jump into this side, do you think it's going to uh, make significant difference in terms of how uh, the relationship uh, between a patient and a doctor has been in America and what's going to be? Uh, I think in the United States, the relationship, the professional relationship between a physician and his patient, uh, money plays a very little role. It is almost not visible, as opposed to India, where there is a direct transaction between a patient and his his doctor. Uh, you mentioned about the health care reform bill in the United States, which has been initiated and successfully now become law. Oh by President Barack Obama. It was very high on his election agenda and which he has fulfilled. I think the impact on society uh, needs to be viewed. Uh, the impact is that doctors will be performing more work in terms of hours that they will put in and compensation levels are bound to decline. It will decline more for the specialist and it will rise for the lesser specialists like the primary care physicians who see a large volume of patients, but they were not very well compensated in the past. So there is a brighter side for them. From a patient perspective, yes, they will get the same amount of care. Only thing, I have a lingering feeling that the lines to the doctor's office is going to rise because uh, 30 million new patients have been accommodated in the U.S. healthcare system now. So they are going to be part of the insured and uninsured line. Fortunately now, there's going to be 100% coverage offered to everybody. So it is going to be a slight change in mindset for the American population to get used to waiting in a line, which typically you see in socialized medicine like in Canada or in England and rest across Europe. There is, uh this uh, likelihood that there'll be a long queue uh, at the doors of the doctors. But there are ways uh, that we need not go and stand in that queue, so whatever preventive measures we can take care. Um, and fortunately, doctors also help us in finding the ways to stay away from them, uh, especially in that role where you badly need them. Uh, talking about the uh, heart, uh, what is it that one uh, day-to-day life which would take care of the heart properly? I think uh, most patients uh, and consumers now are getting hyper-educated about their health and health-related problems. Uh, when it comes to the heart, it is one of those organs that has a very large genetic predisposition to disease. So what you have inherited from your parents, grandparents as part of the genetic trait, there is nothing you can do about it. But when it comes to preventive actions, particularly when you are reaching the age of 50, which I recently did, and I think that's the time you need to become a little bit more conscious. You need to make educated decisions on your diet, follow a very healthy exercise regime, and very important is to indulge in activities like yoga, meditation, and every kind of stress relaxing maneuver because stress is one of the largest killers and which you can still control as a patient.